about to get a little personal today. You know how we do. If you see someone's blessing that you've been waiting for or want, and you can't seem to be happy for them, then it's time to look internally. But as always, let's get to the word. So we're going to do a definition first. Jealousy or jealous. Feeling or showing envy of someone or of their achievements or blessings. Envy, a feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or favor from God. Remember, God is no respecter of persons or God shows no favorites or favoritism. Proverbs 14 and 30, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Job 5 and 2, for anger slays the foolish man and jealousy kills the simple. James 3 verses 14 through 16. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or the day of truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, non-spiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. First Corinthians 3 and 3. You are still worldly for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you. Are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? Galatians 5 and 19, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Verse 20, when God is talking about getting rid of jealousy and some other things too, if you look it up. Verse 21, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ephesians 4 and 22, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, it is corrupt. Through deceitful desires. Verse 23. And be renewed by the spirit of the mind. But see. Before I <laughs> get to the good part about this. Let's just look at this. So. Imagine you go into Burger King or McDonald's. And you put in your order for food. Right. But somebody's in front of you. So they order before you. Whether you're in the drive through Or whether you're in the dining room. So. When you see them get their food, do you get jealous or do you know that your blessing or oh, excuse me, or is it your food is coming next? See, we don't get jealous when we like, well, how come they got theirs before me? You know, we don't know what it took. I mean, and sometimes, you know, somebody food can get there before we do. You ever you ever uh, order your food before somebody and they say, oh, excuse me, um, could you could you pull up to um, lane one and we'll bring out your food? Because, see, when you put a special order in, it takes longer. See, I know like when I go sometimes if I order a, a McDouble every now and then, I'll order it with like <sighs> tomato and some some shredded lettuce. So sometimes my order ain't up as normal. But see, when you order a special blessing, something is coming. See, God don't want us to be jealous of somebody else's blessing. Because if God told us not to be jealous, why would God show us somebody's blessing on purpose? That's not how God works. And so through that, our heart, you know, ended up being a certain way. And we start being jealous and envy of people. And sometimes <laughs> we get jealous of people that are actually got theirs by unjust means hmm see i'm telling you but see understand this if god shows you somebody's blessing that you want or can use that must mean yours is next but like i said we got to look internally so watch this you think god don't want you to be happy all right let's get back to the word Ephesians 3 and 20 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think According to the power that worketh in us. See, this is what God wants us to do. If we see a blessing, we got to say, Lord, I thank you. I'm next. See, because when you're in the McDonald's or wherever, you know you next. So I'm trying to tell you, man, I hope you catch this. Because, see, God is trying to change some of y'all today and give y'all a new way of thinking. Romans 12 and 2. Do not copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Watch this. Hashtag daily. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing and perfect. Second Corinthians five and 17. Therefore, any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new.
verse 18. All thing, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this. What if God was trying to reconcile ourselves to ourselves? See, some of us, sometimes we say, you know, I don't know who I really am or, you know, and God is like, I want you to be happy. Maybe that's why in Ezekiel 36 and 26, he said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Now, I want you to catch this because once you know better, you do better. Isaiah 43 and 19. Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. See where you may be at right now, maybe not where you really want to stay or you might look at it like, man, I'm behind or something like that. But again, I tell you all the time, God's GPS don't always take the shortest route. But God is about to do something new in your life. I hope you catch it. Ephesians 4 and 24 and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. See, watch this. What God is saying today, listen, I'm going to do something new in your life, but I need you to listen. I need you to listen. I need you to do things differently. I need you to think differently. I need you to feel things differently. I understand how, you know, you might see something you say, man, that's it. But you got to look at it and say, if God let them have it before me, it means to let me know. Listen, it's to let me know that I'm next. See, when we stand in line, we wait for that food and somebody get theirs and they order before us. And then they get it. What does that say? Yours is coming next. It's next. But listen, if God is holding something up, he's trying to teach you something in the weight. Because see, a lot of us get overweight. We're spiritually overweight. W-A-I-T. And we have to exercise in that weight because in that weight, God is trying to show us something. Sometimes some people walk away when we don't get the blessing that they think we were, you know, we was about to get. So they'd be like, all right, well, I'm going to stay close because I know they about to go big or whatever. But there's someone to walk away. Think about it. And then when something happened, you'd be like, oh, I thought, you know what I'm saying? Listen, it's cool. <laughs> God know what he's doing. But see, that's how you know those real people because they're going to be around you no matter what. Whether you up, whether you down, whether you got a lot of money, whether you don't got a lot of money. I tell people that all the time. You know, we talk about, you know, we see a lot of people that have a lot of money on TV and stuff like that. And they have a lot of these anxiety issues and all of this stuff. Hmm. Many of us, they just got more money. <laughs> That's it. You know, but still, because money only buys you temporary happiness. But see, God is trying to give you an eternal peace before he give you those material blessings or before he give you those blessings that you've been waiting for for a while. Or that husband or that wife or that helpmate, not that soulmate, because soulmate don't even exist. But yet people ask for it, though. Hmm. So I wonder if you ask for soulmate. I wonder who going to answer that prayer. That's a whole nother story. But what God is saying is there's something internally. That's what we got to do. And God has to give you a new heart so you can live. Because see, in this life, in this walk, in this race, watch this. We got to have thicker skin and a tender heart. You got to keep your heart tender. See, God ain't call us to like people. He call us to love people. It's a difference. That's what God is saying. But see, we get so caught up thinking that we got to have tea and crumpets and stuff like that. You can love people from a distance, sometimes even family members. You know what? I love you. Listen, there's people that I'm not even friends on Facebook. But watch this. I speak to them. I speak to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, listen, I love everybody. But you know what? I don't do drama. And it's simple. When God told me to tell somebody something, if they don't receive it, what did, what did Jesus say in the Bible? He said, kick the dust, wipe the dust off your feet. as like a sign of disrespect and keep it moving, man. Jesus ain't playing. Neither am I. That's why I'm cool. Because see, that's why God didn't t tell us to read the Bible. He told us to study it. And when you study it, it'll tell you about these tests called life. When people act a certain way, you cool. God didn't tell you to stay there. That's why Jesus couldn't perform certain miracles because some of them didn't believe. So he had to go somewhere else. That's what the word says. It says what a prophet is without honor in his own home, his own country. Hmm. And Jesus was the best one. So understand this. If they not going to receive you, that's on them. Watch this. We have the power of choice to reject the way that God sends help. If they don't want to receive your help, then that's on them. But, you know, as always, as I say, love y'all. God bless. But watch this. One thing you might not be able to control is how people act. 
but you can always control how you react. It's time to level up. Hmm. What you gonna do?